And so we come to our last group of mammalian orders in which we will look at the last one and then the last few, and then we will have a special lecture at uh, after this one that deals with one family of mammals that I am particularly fond of. So the first order we'll look at is carnivora. These are carnivores, hence their name. And these are like dogs, wolves, cats, bears, weasels, seals, walruses, a whole large group of mammals. And we're going to look at a couple of things before we go on to the different families. Um, most of these have predatory habits. There's one group actually of this carnivora that is doesn't, and that is the giant panda. And uh, the rest of them have teeth that are specially adapted for tearing flesh. Um, and the canines in particular, like this lion here that you see, their canines are specially designed to dispatch their prey. When the lion bites down on the neck of its prey, those canines go right into the um, carotid artery and that pretty much deals with them and they uh, suffocate at that point. They're distributed all over the world except for Australia and in Antarctica and there are no native forms in Antarctica but seals will actually travel down there. And so let's look at some of the different families. Of course there's canids. Canids are canidae is like dogs and wolves and foxes and coyotes, a very pretty diverse group. Felidae, these are cats. This is everything from domestic cats to lions. So very diverse group also. Uh, felids are better solitary hunters, whereas canids are more pack hunters. So their their abilities and their intelligences are designed around that. The the pack hunters need to communicate well, whereas cats are, have better weapons at their disposal, so to speak. Both are good hunters in their own right, but they just hunt in different ways. And then, of course, there's Ursidae, which we will spend an additional lecture on. These are bears, and since we're going to spend more time on them, I won't go into any detail with them. There are Mustelidae. These are like um, weasels, skunks, and otters, and badgers, and wolverines, and other honey badger carrying its own young there. And this uh, wolverine here is eating a chicken off the road. And then there's Oteridae. These are eared seals. And so you can see the little ear there. And so these are like sea lions and um, fur seals. So the next group that we'll look at are, and it's one more thing about carnivores. There's only 280 species of carnivores, but we'll usually if you ask someone to name an animal, they're probably going to name a carnivore or they're going to name this guy, the elephants. They come from the order Probuscidae, largest living land animal. They have uh, two upper incisors that are elongated as tusks, and so their tusks are actually teeth. They have very well-developed molar teeth, and as they age, those teeth actually decrease in number. And so by the time they're really old, they only have one giant tooth. When that tooth wears down, they starve to death. Kind of sad. But they can live very long. You have, um, in some parts of the world, like in the uh, Asiatic area, Indian area of the world, these elephants have been used, have been domesticated, or at least partly, can't really ever fully domesticate an elephant, but they have been uh, trained to do uh, a lot of domestic tasks, particularly heavy lifting. And um, African elephants, is, are they more difficult? The ones on the left, they've been more difficult to tame. But in some parts of history, they were actually famously used as parts of armies, particularly the Roman army, the Carthaginian army in particular used them to uh, kind of like a super cavalry of sorts. Next is Parasodidactyla. These are odd hoofed animals. And so these are animals that have three, five, seven hooves. These are like horses and donkeys and zebras and 
tapirs, and rhinoceroses. Uh, a couple of things about these guys. They have an odd number of toes. They can have one, or they can have three, typically. Uh, they have a cornified uh, hoof, and so this is like a keratinized kind of thing. Um, both this group and the next one that we're going to look at are often referred to as ungulates which comes from the Latin word ungula, which means hoof. And so these are hoofed animals. Teeth are usually adapted for grinding plants. Uh, the horse family, oddly enough, only has one functional toe. But you haven't really thought of that before, but horses just have a single toe. Tapirs have a short proboscis that is formed from the upper lip and their nose. You can see here this proboscis, which is just a fancy word for nose kind of rhinos uh there's several species of rhinos found in the world southeast asia and africa one of which just recently went extinct the black black rhino and their horn is almost like a big hair which is odd to think about only 17 species here but they are among some of the most famous species in the world and then their pair is the art Ar these are even toed animals this is like uh camels, pigs, deer, um, and all of the deer allies, hippos, antelopes, cows, sheep, goats, a lot of, um, a lot of these animals are familiar to us. Most of these ungulates have two toes, though the hippo and some others have four. Each toe again is sheathed in that hoof and Many of these animals have horns or antlers as well. This particular animal or this particular group of animals is the reason for civilization. Uh, that's a whole nother class, but a very interesting topic. Without these animals, human civilization would not have occurred. The next order to look at is the cetacea. And these are whales and dolphins and porpoises. The anterior limbs, that means the four limbs, are modified into very broad flippers. Posterior limbs are oftentimes absent or vestigial, meaning that they're, they have the bones there, but you don't see them. They have the fleshy dorsal fin. The tail is divided into two flukes. So this is a familiar kind of picture to you, these, these two little areas there. They have no hair, except for some of them have hair around their mouth. They have no skin glands, except for their mammary glands, of course. And um, they have no external ear, very small eyes, typically. Uh, the order is divided into two groups, two toothed whales. This is like dolphins, porpoises, sperm whales, and uh, like killer whales. And then there's baleen whales. This is like... Um, you know, the blue whale, the gray whale, the humpback whale. Baleen whales are generally larger than toothed whales. It's because baleen whales are eating uh, krill, like giant, uh, not giant shrimp, giant amounts of tiny shrimp. And krill are among some of the largest numbers of animals in the world. And they will go down and they will feed on these krill and they can get really big. As you can see, here's a picture of a blue whale. Blue whale is the largest animal that has ever lived around 78 species of whales and porpoises and dolphins and then there's the primate uh, i'm always surprised by some of my pictures there's a former student of mine who is a indeed a primate and then there's these are things like monkeys apes humans they are, as far as uh, brain development, they are first in the animal kingdom. They have a very large cerebral cortex. Most species are arboreal, meaning that they have developed um, certain traits to live in trees, and they eat insects and other things. Most of their um, tree-dwelling habits are developed for capturing food, and of course then... Uh, avoiding enemies and it's believed that the reason that for the large brains is actually because of these tree uh, habits because they're having to constantly move and think and adapt and change 
And because trees are always changing, if you think about it, there's not normal paths through a forest if you're in the trees necessarily. And so this is largely why many biologists believe that primates develop large brains. Then they started coming down out of the trees. And of course, the rest is history. They, uh, as a group, they generally have five digits and don't or on their hands. And they usually have flat nails as opposed to a claw or something like that. Um, except for humans, these are complete. Most of these are completely covered with hair. Forelimbs are adapted for grasping, and for some of them, their hind limbs also are able to do this. Um, again, lacking claw scales, horns, hoofs, anything like that for the primate. Their primary ad adaptive um, advantage is their brains, which is the only group in the animal kingdom that is like that. 